I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Exodus chapter 20. We are entering into the back portion of this chapter today. And uh, so let's take some time to read Exodus chapter 20. We're going to see the uh, effect upon the people that the giving of the law had, and then we will see the reminder by God. It says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So as we come into these verses, we see, first of all, in verses 18 through 21, that the effect that the receiving of the law had upon the people of Israel. We notice in verse 18 that they were afraid. It says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. So, as God is reminding them of his holiness and as the as God meets with them in a powerful way, we see the result of that is that the people are fearful and that the people actually remove and that they stand afar off. And not only that, but they also here saw the need for a mediator. It says in verse 19, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. So, here we see the nation of Israel saw the need for a mediator between them and God. And friends, the truth of the matter is that every single one of us need a mediator between God and man. And that mediator is not another man. That mediator is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can take the hand of God in one hand and take the hand of man in the other hand and bring the two together. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Friends, Jesus Christ is the only one that can be a mediator between God and man. Then we saw in verse 20 that they need, needed to be proved. It says in verse 20, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that ye see not. So we see that this was a time of proving. It was a time of testing for the nation of Israel. And God had determined that he was going to uh, test the nation of Israel during this time. And, and he comes and he tests them. He proves them. And also he wants to see the fear of God in their lives. And friends, he said, notice it says that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. You know, it's interesting, friends. I believe one of the reasons that people are involved in the sin that they're in today, very simply, is because they do not fear God as he ought to be feared. Friends, when we fear God, when we understand who God is, and we have that reverence and that respect and that fear for God, we will not be involved in sin in the way that many are involved in sin today. And then in verse 21, we see the people standing afar off. It says, and the people stood afar off. I like this. And Moses drew near onto the thick darkness where God was. He was not afraid of that thick darkness. He was not afraid of the presence of God. And Moses drew near into the presence of God when all of the people distanced themselves and stood afar off. Now go get some of the special reminders that they are giving in the, re, in the remainder of this chapter. First of all, 
we see that they are forbidden to make gods of silver and gods of gold. He already told them, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt make, not make any graven image. But he reaffirms that here in verses 22 and 23. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. In other words, you've had an encounter, an experience with the living God. He has spoke with you. Now in verse 23, you shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. So once again, he is reminding them of the danger of making anything that is an imitation of God. And he says, listen, don't you be involved in making idols. Don't be involved in making gods of wood and stone and that, you're, you, that you will bow down to and serve. And then we see in verse 24 that he talks about the provision of the altar in verses 24 through 26. It says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen in all places where I record my name, I shall come unto thee and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered therein. So we see a number of things that he commands them uh, regarding the provision of the altar. First of all, it was to be made of earth in verse 24. And he makes that abundantly clear that they make the altar of earth. He says, an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. And then he talks about what they should sacrifice thereon and what is a fitting sacrifice before God. And then he tells them in verse 25, that if it was made of stone, it was not to be made of hewn stone, that the stone was to be, uh, that the altar was to be made of stone just as they found it in the earth. In other words, it was to be made of natural materials and in no way fashioned by a man. It was not to be hewn. And then we see in verse 26 that he tells them that there's to be no steps to the altar, and that is for decency's sake. You see, neither shalt thou go by steps upon mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So he says, listen, don't have any steps up to the altar for the priest that has to walk up to that altar in a robe and wearing a robe and things of that nature. And it's a reminder to us that God is concerned about modesty. Oh, that the people of God today would be concerned about modesty. One of the things that is severely missing in the world that we live in is this whole idea of modesty. And friends, the people of God um, need to understand how it is that God wants them to dress and we need to dress accordingly. As we come back into this tomorrow, I want to conclude our study in Exodus chapter 20 by looking at what is the purpose of the law. There are so many people that are confused today regarding the purpose of the law, regarding why God gave the law. So I want to give a few concluding statements and draw in not only from this passage, but from the New Testament tomorrow, some places where God clearly tells us the reason why the law was given. And we want to do that because, friends, I don't want you to have a misconstrued view of why God is giving us the law because it's, it's caused a lot of people today to seek a salvation by works rather than understanding that salvation is by grace. So we're going to see that. We're going to deal with that. As we close today, let me just say in verses 18 through 26, as we looked at him today, as the people are afraid and understand their need of a mediator and God is testing them, we see that God acts in grace toward these people. And uh, friends, it's, it's a wonderful thing to understand that our God is a holy God. He's a righteous God. He is a just God. But at the same time, praise God that he deals in grace toward us when we understand who he is and when we reverence him as he ought to be reverenced. Praise God that our God is also a God of grace. Have a great day.